Ah, we got to talk, guys. We got to talk. You saw the thumbnail. You saw the title. You might get pissed at this video. You might even want to leave a dislike. Heck, you might even want to leave a uh, hate comment, right? But I don't care. I'm going to say this stuff in this video and be real with you guys because why would I want to sugarcoat crap, right? I'm not one of these other YouTube channels that sugarcoats things, roses, peaches, and cream. Nothing like that in this video, guys. So if you all find value, hit the like button, subscribe. Drop me a comment and get your free money from Moomoo up to six stocks, each up to 3500 bucks. Just use that link down below, deposit at least 100 bucks, and boom, you get your money. And with that being said, let's talk about some stocks, recession, what stocks are not going to do well in the recession that I believe, honestly, I believe we're in a recession right now, guys. So I want to break down kind of what to avoid, what to look at, and kind of my perspective on everything going on right now. So let's just dive right into the video. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist at this point in time to understand and to know that the markets are in absolute shambles, right? We have the S&P 500 now down about, let's see here, um, a little bit over 14% from all time highs. We have triple Q. Let's take a look here. Triple Q is down about 23.5%. We have the Russell down, let's see here, probably a little bit worse than Triple Q. Uh, yeah, down about 24.5%. As we have the Dow Jones down, let's see here, the Dow's probably down 10 plus percent at this point, meaning it is officially, yup, it is officially the Dow in correction territory. So the markets, obviously, tech. NASDAQ, right? The Russell, those are getting hit. Those indexes are getting hit even more. But now we're starting to see the S&P drop into correction territory, deeper into correction territory. And now we're getting the Dow Jones finally in correction territory for, uh, well, I don't want to say for the first time because it was technically in correction territory in the end of February. And, and then we saw that big rally. But now the Dow, again, like I said, is in correction, uh, correction territory yet again. So there's a lot of fear right now, guys, a lot of uncertainty, right? We have the Fed raising rates. Are they going to do a 50 basis point, 75 basis point? I don't think anybody thinks they're going to do a one percentage point hike in one meeting, but who knows? It could be on the table if things get very ugly in terms of inflation. We have negative GDP, which just came out a couple days ago. We got news that in the first quarter, the U.S. economy declined 1.4% when the estimate was an increase of 1%. So that's coming in hot, right? Yield curve, I don't think it's currently inverted, but the yield curve did invert a couple of weeks ago or maybe a week or two ago. And you know, you know how that goes, guys. It inverts and then it uninverts, then it inverts again. And you guys know historically, the yield curve inversion has been a very, very, very good way to predict a recession. And we're already seeing the signs, guys. I mean, literally, the, the writing is on the wall. We have the negative GDP, again, the yield curve inverting. We have inflation. We have gas prices going up. Oil is over $100 a barrel. We have craziness in Russia, Ukraine. And even though people are spending money, honestly, a lot of people are still spending money. You know, the clock's ticking, in my opinion. I believe that there might be a point where... You know, I'm not saying I'm a doomsday or anything, but there might be a point where things get pretty ugly in the short term, you know, before they get better. And that is what needs to happen. What you guys have to realize is recessions are actually healthy. It's kind of like the cleanse, a cleansing of the economy. Um, and then we get back back to normal growth, all that good stuff. So the writing's on the wall. At this point, the writing is on the wall. Uh, you know, all those things I just mentioned. And we have stocks that are getting destroyed. You know, now at this point, large caps are getting destroyed. Netflix, Facebook, the list goes on with large caps. And of course, the unprofitable, um, excuse me, guys, the unprofitable small caps have been getting crushed. And I feel like those, to be honest, and I've said this, we could look at Teladoc for an example, right? These stocks, even though they've gone down a lot, they can always go down more. I mean, look at Teladoc. It went from 156 bucks back in November to about $56, right? So it dropped 65% in the past couple of months. And you and you could have been like, there's no way this stock's going to go lower, right? 
wrong. It did go lower. It dropped another 40%. So you guys have to realize these stocks that are small companies, they're unprofitable, they're quite frankly in very volatile industries or whatever, <clears throat> you know, these companies, these stocks, they could keep going down and down and down. There's really no bottom for these speculative, unprofitable companies that really shot up during the pandemic and now they're collapsing. There's no bottom because it's very difficult to value a company that doesn't make money, you know, and, and their revenues are all over the place. You know, they're losing this amount one quarter, this amount the next quarter, you know, their earnings are all over the place. It is damn near impossible to value a company like that. So that is why when people say there's no bottom to these small caps, there's really no freaking bottom. I mean, Teladoc could go, for all we know, went from 300, now it's at 30. 33, 35, it could go to 15, it could go to 10, it could go to $5 a share, right? We can see companies like, um, I don't want to throw any company under the bus right now, but what's another small cap? Um, uh, I don't know. Um, just think of any, any small cap that did very well. We don't have to dive too deep into that because I don't want to go too far on a tangent, but just think about any small cap that did very well. It's crashing now. It's been crashing. It's not profitable. Nothing's turning around for that company, those companies in general, right? Think about these companies. They could just keep going down, guys. So keep that in mind. In a recessionary time period, right, when rates are being raised, which they are right now, these companies that are unprofitable, their earnings are pushed way into the future, right? And when Fed raises rates, it hurts their valuation, right? It hurts their present value, or you guys know what I mean, right? You, you know what I'm getting at. It hurts their uh, price today because all their earnings, they're not making money right now, and people want companies in recessionary times when the rates are going up. People want companies that make money today, right now. They don't want to wait into the future to, 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 to you know, um, wait for the companies to become profitable, make more money, yada, yada, yada. So these companies, I think, will continue to get hurt hurt in the short term, no doubt about it. And companies that sell, listen to this, companies that sell wants and not needs will be doing very well in this environment. And the next couple of quarters, next year or two, if we're if we're really in a recession, which I do believe, um, you know, it might be a bold claim, but screw it. I think we're in a recession right now. I mean, I thought, honestly, I thought that a couple months ago. I'm like, eh, I think we might be in a recession right now. And uh, now all the all the the writing's on the wall, guys, right? That's what I'm thinking. I could be wrong, but who knows, right? So people want wants or companies that sell wants and not needs will do well. Think about Netflix, right? Is Netflix a want or is Netflix a need, right? Netflix is 100% a want, guys, and this stock has gone down from 700 to 185. This thing is down 75%. The proof is in the pudding, right? Guys, this is not a need. It is a want, and companies that sell uh, needs will do very well in this environment. Think of Johnson & Johnson and just look at the stock. I mean, Johnson & Johnson is damn near at an all-time high right now. Procter & Gamble, these companies sell wants or uh, needs rather, not wants. And think about when your money is tight, right? And who knows? I don't know how much money you guys make watching this video, but I guarantee you there's people out there Right. You know, if you take a sample size of a thousand people, there's going to be people that are rich. They don't worry about money. There's going to be people that are poor. And obviously they worry about money and there's going to be people that, you know, it, they're they're doing fine. Right. And you got to realize when think about it, when your money is tight, um, what are you going to spend money on? <laughs> I mean, are you going to go out and uh, go to Virgin Galactic and, and take that flight? Right. <laughs> you know, are you going to go out and uh, subscribe to every Netflix or, you know, all these subscription models? No, I mean, you're, you're going to focus on things that are needs, right? And that is what um, I'm, I'm thinking right now. That's kind of what I'm seeing. The companies that are needs are doing very, very well. You know, Costco's up a lot. Costco's doing extraordinary well, extraordinarily well, even though now it's down almost 100 bucks a share from the all-time high. You guys get the point, right? So you got. I don't want to tell you guys to get out of these stocks now, but stocks that are small caps, speculative, right? 
They're, I think there's still a risk there, even though they're down a crap ton. Um, I think there's still a risk there until we start seeing potentially, you know, you you know when, when things will turn around, guys, is when inflation comes down, which we're not getting any signs of that yet. When oil comes down in price, when we start seeing, um, you know, GDP growth again, when we start getting earnings that are not being rattled by inflation, you know, this is when we're going to start getting that turnaround. And of course, when the Fed starts accommodating, um, you know, what am I trying to say here? When the Fed starts maybe dropping rates, which we're clearly not in a rate um, cut cycle yet, but that is when we're going to get that pop. And, and I mean, in, in these small caps and who the heck knows that that could be in a year or two from now. I mean, it, it could be in a while. So I don't want to continue ranting, but at this point, guys, um, the markets are destroyed. And one, one thing about large caps, guys, let me mention large caps. These are the last to go, right? Let's say this market does collapse even more. Spy goes down. I think spy, there's a chance. I mentioned this. I think it could go down about 20%. Now it's currently down 14. So I think there could be five, six percentage points more to go on spy. And if it does go down 20%, Watch out for these large caps that have been holding up. Uh, they might start coming down as well. You know, Apple, believe it or not, is only down 13%. It's actually holding up better than all of the indexes except for the Dow. So if SPY starts going down even more, Apple's going to start to give. I think Google, even though Google's already come down 20%, um, I think it might come down even more. You know, Google's down 25 It might go down 30-ish percent, maybe more. And of course, you guys know, I love Google. I'll be buying it on that, uh, you know, on that downside. And I've been buying it the past couple of days, um, you know, and I'll be buying more again. Microsoft will start to give. Uh, I think this one's already down a good chunk. Let's see here. Um, this one's down about 18, 19%. So it could go down 25 30%. And that is when, honestly, guys, if the large caps start to give, I don't want to say we're going to be near a bottom in the market, but that would be a point where I'm like, okay, now I should really start going heavy into the markets. Um, and I'm not going all in right now. But I have been buying. I have been nibbling on the way down. Uh, and again, if SPY goes down 20%, that's when I'm going to be going even heavier. So that's it, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this video, got some value out of it, and kind of where my head is at a little bit, uh, some perspective. If you did, hit the like button, drop me a comment, and subscribe. We're almost at 25K. Uh, let's see where we're at right now. We're probably at... What are we at? Uh, 24,960 or something like that. So a couple more subscribers, guys. And we're going to be at 25,000. And uh, make sure to get your free money. You might as well. It's free money, guys. Up to six stocks from Moo Moo. Link down below. Deposit at least $100 into that account. And boom, you get up to, what, six stocks, each up to 3500 bucks. And, uh, yeah, enjoy that free money. Link down below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, as always. Peace out.